Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sophie and I am the founder of Agnes London. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I upload videos on sewing, sustainable living and upcycling. Most of just sewing at the moment, but I have got some more videos around sustainable living coming for you. In today's video, I'm going to be making some linen pyjamas. I really hope you can't hear the thunder. Hope you'll be able to able to edit that out. So as I'm sure most of you know, it is super hot in the UK at the moment um, and it's still super hot at night time. So I am going to make myself a little linen sleep set with some shorts and a little cami top. I'm going to use the new stripy linen from my product range to make this. I really love this fabric. So I'm really excited to make myself something out of it. Linen is a great natural fiber for helping you, like it's quite breathable and it keeps you nice and cool as well. So hopefully it is the perfect fabric for this project. As usual, I don't have a pattern. I don't have any pattern paper, as I keep saying. So, but I do have this existing old set of pajamas that I got many, many years ago now from ASOS and I've worn them so much and they're really comfy and I know that they fit me and I like the shape of them. So I'm gonna use these. We've just got a little cami top and a little pair of shorts as well. So I'm gonna use these as the pattern to cut out my pajamas. So it's a really good technique if say you've got an item of clothing you really love, really suits you, and you want another one in a different fabric, more colors. So yeah, it's a really helpful way to copy an item without having any pattern. So I'll show you how I did that. It is absolutely boiling. So let's get into this video and I will show you how I made pajamas. So I've got my pajamas that I'm gonna copy, the linen fabric, tailor's chalk, tape measure and scissors as well. So as you can see, the pajamas are fairly simple. The back is literally just a straight rectangle and then it's got these spaghetti straps and then the shorts are just straightforward. So I'm gonna start off with the back. As it's a straight rectangle, I'm just measuring the length and checking that it's the same length all the way along. And then I'm gonna cut it on the fold to make sure it's accurate. I'm using my tailor's chalk and my pattern cutter to help me measure it out. Then for the front, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it down as though it was a pattern piece. As I still want to wear these pyjamas, I don't want to unpick them. If they were a garment that I no longer wanted to wear, I could unpick them and use each individual piece as a pattern piece. But at the moment, I'm trying to pin along all the seams, trying to lay the garment as flat as possible. And here I decided that it'd be better to cut on the fold, so it'd be more accurate cut on the fold and then I wouldn't have a seam down the centre front as well. This actually has a dart in it and it's like a little pleat at the front but I decided to leave that out and just ignore that. So now I'm just adding on one centimetre seam allowance with my tailor's chalk and pattern master by chasing around it and cutting it out. Careful not to cut my actual pyjamas. There we have the front panel and the back panel as well and they match up. So now I need to do the facing for the back panel. I'm using my back panel as my pattern piece, measuring about six centimeters, which will allow for four centimeter facing plus seam allowance. Again, I'm gonna do the same at the front. I'm gonna use my front panel as my pattern piece. I'm just pinning that down as this fabric seems to move quite a lot. Next up for the straps, I need to cut out some bias strips. So I folded the fabric over so it's on the bias, which is at a 45 degree angle to the grain line. And then I'm drawing out strips 2.5 centimetres apart and cutting them out. As you can see, this gives the fabric a little bit of stretch. Now for the shorts, I'm doing the same again by pinning them down. The front was slightly easier. I'm pinning down as close to the seams as I possibly can trying to keep them as flat as possible. It was a little bit trickier because the shorts are slightly more 3D than the top was. Mainly I'm trying to keep the center front line straight with these stripes of the fabric. Again, I'm just adding my centimeter seam allowance, tracing round. The fabric's folded over so there's a pair of these. And then I'm just laying the pattern pieces back on the shorts just to double check that it actually works out. I'm going to sew in the waistbands and just cutting out a strip that's again about six centimetres wide. 
and now for the back. The back was harder because the back waistband is elastic and it was hard for me to stretch that out and keep the fabric flat that I was pinning it to. So I ended up just having to pin it down as best I could and then marking pointers with the chalk on the fabric and then unpinning it and retracing the pattern. So I have all four panels in my shorts, plus my waistband, my straps, the back panel for my top and the front panel for the top. And here's the fabric that I have left. I want to keep the waist fabric to a minimum so I'm cutting out strips to add a thrill to the hem. And I'm also going to make an eye mask as well to go with my pyjama set. The pattern for this eye mask is also available on my website. There's a video on my IGTV where I made one by hand. And then I'm just cutting some more bias strips. So on my sewing machine, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this getty strap just by folding these strips in half and sewing with a 0.5 centimeter seam allowance. Some of the strips may be too short, so to join them and placing them at a right angle to each other and stitching down to join them. And then I'm using a trusty safety pin to turn the straps inside out. This is the easiest method to this. Next up, to join the side seams, I'm using what we call a French seam. I could use my overlocker to finish this, or I could use a zigzag stitch, but I decided the French seam would be the neatest way. So to do that, I'm placing the wrong sides together, stitching the seam down with half a centimetre seam allowance, and then turning the other way around and stitching down another half a centimetre. This means that all your raw edge is enclosed within the seam, and it's a really neat way to finish the seams. Now the side seams are done, I need to also do the same with my facing. Once the side seams are attached, I decided to roll hem the facing just by turning it over half a centimetre and again. And now I'm pinning it in place to attach it to the top. Because I couldn't quite figure out what I was doing with the straps at this point, I did leave the tops of the triangles on the front open and I also left space at the back open as well for me to attach the straps. But once I'd sewn up the top, it soon became pretty clear to me and I just sewed the straps back in between the two layers of fabric and stitched over them to secure them in between my facing and my outer fabric. Now I'm turning it the right way round and I'm just adding some little snips around the curve at the front of the top. And I decided to stay stitch the facing back. So what I'm doing is I'm just pushing all the seam allowance towards the facing and stitching along. I also did a little stitch to attach the side seam of the facing to the side seam of the top to stop it coming out. And there we go, that's the top almost done. I'm going to pop that aside now and come back to that. Working on my shorts, I'm going to attach the centre front and the centre back with the French seam. And then I'm going to do the side seams. And then lastly, once I've done that, I'll do the seam at the crotch as well. So at the moment, the back waistband is a lot wider than the front. This is because on the shorts that I copied, they had elastic at the back waistband. So now I've just measured on the original shorts the length of the elastic. I'm going to add it in to the back of my shorts by attaching it within the seams when I finish the French seams. So next up is the waistband, so I'm going to attach the side seams and the centre seams as well and then again I'm going to roll hem the edge to finish this off. Again I could use the overlocker which probably would have been quicker but then yeah, I have to get the overlocker out. I'm going to pin the right side of the waistband to the right side of the shorts and sew all the way around, making sure that I don't sew over the elastic at this point. 
Once that's done, I'm going to stay stitch the seam allowance over to the waistband, just to give it a little bit of a neater look, and then I'm going to stitch the other side of the waistband down, about two and a half centimetres away from the edge. This will create a channel for the elastic to go through as well. And there we go, and there's the shorts. Now I'm going to gather up the strips of fabric that I cut out. I've adjusted the length of my stitch on my machine to the longest it will go. And I'm just doing two rows of stitching and then I'm going to pull the top row to gather the fabric. But at the moment I'm doing the longest strip which is for the top and I'm also going to roll hem in this as well. And then attach it to the top. I've also done some frills for the shorts and as you can see we don't quite fit all the way around the legs. This is because I left myself a bit of room so I wouldn't have too much excess fabric in between the legs. I've also decided to take the frills back to nothing so I've given them this like little curved edge and now I'm going to roll hem them. I deliberately didn't do this beforehand because I knew that I'd want to take them back to nothing but I wanted to stitch it to the shorts first so I could follow the edge of the curve on the shorts. There's a little frill around the edge. So when I tried on these shorts, I realised that the waistband was quite saggy, so I decided to add a drawstring to the front as well, which I also think will go quite nicely with the little tied spaghetti straps on the top. So I've made a little hole at the front and I'm just threading them through with a safety pin. And I'm also stitching them into the side seam. Unfortunately, I did have to unpick my waistband a little bit to do this, but hey ho. And that is my shorts done. They look so cute. Next up for the eye mask, I did the same thing to create a channel for the elastic by stitching the bias strips and then turning them through with a safety pin. And then I used the safety pin again to thread the elastic pin. It's a really handy tool, the safety pin. The only thing you have to remember when you're doing this is that you hold onto both edges of elastic. And then I'm just enclosing the elastic into the two layers of the mask and sewing around. So here we have the finished product. So I made myself a little eye mask as well to help reduce the amount of waste fabric I had. So that's a nice little cute sleep eye mask. And then, which matches my pyjama set. Ta-da! Here's the top. So it's nice and boxy. It's really loose fitting. And I don't mind that because like I said, I want it to keep me cool. And originally I was just gonna do one length straps, but I decided to do little bow ties, just an easy way to keep them adjustable. And then we've got the frill around the bottom. Cause if you've watched any of my previous YouTube videos, I'm a sucker for a frill around the bottom. We have the shorts. Ta -da! These look like right bloomers, don't they? So originally I was just gonna do the elastic on the back waist like the um, ASOS shorts I copied had, but when I tried it on, it was really saggy around the waist. So I added a drawstring at the front as well so I could tighten it at the front. And then I also added the frill around the bottom. And as you saw me doing, once I'd sewn this on, I trimmed this frill back because I thought that I probably wouldn't want too much excess fabric. I think all in all, it, you, I used about a metre of fabric on this. And by doing these drawstring cords and the sleep mask as well, that really helped me use up the leftover fabric. I was going to do a scrunchie also, but honestly, by the time I'd finished doing this, I was just so warm from sewing that I'm going to leave that another, for another day. So yeah, I am excited to wear it. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video if you thought it was easy enough to follow. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go before the thunder and lightning gets too loud. I will see you next week with another video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because I upload a new video every week on sewing, sustainable living, DIY. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week.